tuning in to our weekly Q&A with the Bearded Broker. I aim to bring these live Q&As to you every single week, answering all things mortgages, house buying process, and everything else uh, in between. So I have some questions uh, this week from, they're all from one person actually, from uh, Andrea from Livingston. Uh, and Andrea's questions are, so we'll go with question number one is, so she states, initial interest rate is key to equity. So what I think Andrea is asking is, if I've, depending on the size of my deposit, will that influence the interest rate that I get from the lender? So let me try and explain that. So a mortgage lender, when they're giving you a mortgage, when they're giving you an amount, they will base what interest rate that you get on how much deposit you're putting down. And when I say deposit, it's deposit by a way of a percentage. So if you're only putting 5% down, then your deposit, your interest rate will be higher than it would be if you were putting down a 10% deposit or 15 or 20 and it goes in 5% decrements so for every 5% extra that you can put in then the interest rate that you will get will be more beneficial to you and ultimately the reason for this is is the more deposit you're putting in the less risk it is to the lender so therefore they're happy to sell you a lower rate of interest so Andrea I hope that answers your question if not please just get in touch and I will be happy to try again. And if indeed that's exactly what you meant. Uh, so question number two from Andrea is, can you remortgage immediately after getting a mortgage if you didn't fix it to get a better rate? Now, Andrea, I'm not sure why you, you would do that, but presumably I think what you mean is if you bought a property that needed a lot of work, a work done to it. So if you bought something worth £120,000 and you were able to get that for less expensive and you were able to do lots of work to it and really increase the value and then therefore if you only put down a small deposit to begin with, let's say 5%, and then you do the work for five, six, seven months you totally got the place and then it's worth a lot more money and then yes you can remortgage later down the line to then try and get yourself a better interest rate because again the same as question one that then technically is you've got a bigger deposit within that property so so the answer is yes that there's there's lots of little moving parts to that to be honest with you Andrea but again because at the moment you can't really get a 95% mortgage that has doesn't have penalties to come out of it. So again, depending on the numbers, whether that would be worthwhile for you. So in theory, the answer is yes, you can remortgage immediately or within a six month period. Uh, a lot of lenders need you to wait six months. Uh, so in theory, the answer is yes, but will depend upon the numbers. But yes, yeah, some people do that. Uh, if they can really increase the, the, the value of it pretty sharp. Uh, question number three, Andrea, is, so taking uh, a mortgage, I think what she's saying here is, is it worth to getting a mortgage product that doesn't charge a product fee? And I'll explain that. So I really refer to this as the seesaw mortgage balance. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by that. So. Let's say you're borrowing an amount of £200,000. It's usually worthwhile paying a fee, a product fee, to buy in to a lower interest rate. Let, let's say I can save you £80 a month by buying into that lower interest rate. So over two years, in comparison, you'll be able to, let's say the product fee was a thousand pounds to buy in, you would make that money back by saving 80 pounds a month. But I typically refer to the seesaw area as around about 120, 130,000 pounds is anywhere borrowing less than that. It's typically not worth paying a product fee. And 
anywhere over that, it's usually worth paying a product fee to buy into a lower interest rate. Hopefully that helps, Andrea. Again, like everything, it's every case on its own merits. And when when I source a mortgage for someone, uh, we use a, a system which works out the true cost for us. So we'll look at how much someone is borrowing over the term, what sort of product we're looking at, e.g. a fixed rate, and then we'll do the true cost analysis over one with a fee and one without a fee, and then I'd make a recommendation based on the best true cost, 99 times out of 100. There are one or two circumstances when that isn't appropriate, but uh, most of the time that's what we do. Uh, I like this one, uh, and it definitely shows that Andrea's thinking way beyond, and that is how to properly plan over payments. Now, again, depending on someone's circumstances and how strict they are with themselves. So you can overpay into a mortgage. There's no industry standard, but it's typically 10% of the balance. So if you borrow £100,000 today, typically in year one, you can overpay by 10%. Let's say, for example, it's a two-year fixed rate. In year one, you can overpay by 10% with no penalty. In year two, you can overpay by 10% also with no penalty. Now, how to plan overpayments? I prefer in the very beginning to have a discussion with someone and say, what is your budget? Let, let's take it up as far to the budget as possible because I want to get you the least mortgage term that I can get. Why take something over 30 years if you can afford it over 22? So I always go through someone's income. I go through what their expenditure will be. I see how much budget is left. So when I talk budget, I look at things like uh, the, the mortgage payment, insuring that mortgage. So if something happens to you, you need to be able to pay that mortgage. So insuring that mortgage could be life insurance or income protection. And I look at the total budget. I always encourage people at this point, take what's affordable and take what's, what's in your means. If you then still have money throughout the year, let's say you get a bonus of £3,000, you can overpay that into the mortgage. I'm often asked, will I, will I just save the money up and then pay it as a lump sum? Let's say you're getting commission every month of £100 or you've got some money coming in from, you know, whatever. I would always encourage to overpay into the mortgage ASAP. A mortgage is a little bit like a credit card. So the interest that is being accumulated onto that balance of your mortgage is accumulated every single day. So if you make an overpayment into your mortgage, it comes directly off the mortgage balance the next day, and therefore the interest that's been accumulated the next day is less, it's always becoming less. So if you've got cash to put into the mortgage, put it in ASAP, don't wait. 99 times out of 100 now with mortgages, the interest is accumulated daily. So it's advantageous to pay it in when you've got the cash. Uh, planning for overpayments is going to depend upon your circumstances. If you get a quarterly bonus, if you get an annual bonus, if you're waiting on some stocks and shares being cashed in, that sort of thing. So you just have to, depending on your own circumstances, but I would always say in the very beginning, take the shortest term you can possibly afford. A good mortgage broker will, will assess that for you in the very, very beginning. The best example I can ever give you is about seven years ago, I had a client come to me who had been to RBS and he said, I've been quoted this mortgage, it's over 30 years. This chap worked uh, offshore, he earned a lot of money and he wasn't buying an expensive property. I did a full assessment for him. I could shrink that mortgage term to 11 years and therefore it was some crazy number like saving him seven to, seven to eight thousand pounds worth of interest over that term just because I'd spent an extra 10 minutes going through that assessment. So hopefully that helps Andrea and hopefully that helps you lots. If you've got any questions at all, any mortgage questions, any questions about the house buying process and indeed anywhere, anyone else you'd like to see uh, live as well, solicitors, estate agents, that sort of thing. We're hoping that next week I will be doing a physical live uh, with a chap, a first time buyer who's got some questions for us and hopefully we'll get uh, him on next week where we can ask some questions. But that's it for now. That's the Bearded Broker coming live once again. If you've got any questions in the comments, uh, happy to answer and we'll be uploading this to Facebook and YouTube if you would like to replay any of that and if I've not answered anything properly 
please let me know and I'll have another go at it. So thanks very much and we'll see you next week, 12 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you.